neighborhood associations, governments, and other entities cannot restrict or impair outside TV antenna installations less than 12 feet above the roof line. However, many localities have zoning codes for antenna grounding, usually based on the National Electrical Code. One of the first considerations is where the antenna cable will enter the home, the cable conduit. You might be able to utilize an unused cable or satellite TV conduit and or coax. Try to keep the conduit close to antenna location. Next, mount the coax ground block as close as possible to the conduit. Then decide on a roof or side structure mast mount. Avoid overhead power and utility lines. Roof mounts must be installed carefully to prevent roof leakage. Side structure mounting makes for a stronger mount. When using a preamp, mount it to the antenna before installing. Then mount and aim the antenna using the compass or terrain features before securing. Then connect RG6 coax cable to the antenna connector. Many antennas come with a rubber boot to protect the coax to antenna connection from weather. Secure the boot to the connection. If you don't have a boot, electrical tape will work. Secure the cable with insulated cable straps. Loop the cable at the bottom to allow rain to drip off the loop instead of collecting at the home conduit. Connect the cable to the ground block. Then run another coax cable from the other end of the ground block to inside the home. Don't forget to protect all outside coax connections with a rubber boot or electrical tape. If you're using a preamp, connect the cable directly into the preamp power unit inside the home. Additionally, make sure the coax ground block passes DC power. Most do. The antenna preamp gets DC power through the coax cable. The cable between the preamp and power unit should not have any signal splitters or 300 to 75 ohm cable adapters. Try not to use any cable connectors. But if you do, make sure they pass DC power. Most do. Next, attach a ground clamp to the antenna mast. Connect number 10 copper wire to the clamp. It can be insulated or uninsulated. Then run the wire through the coax ground block, making sure the bare copper makes good contact with the block screw. Some people ground the system with a copper ground rod near the coax ground block. The National Electrical Code connects the ground wire to the electrical service ground. Use the ground clamp to attach the wire to the service ground, usually a metal pipe running into the ground near the fuse, breaker panel, or power meter. The ground wire can run outside or inside the home to get to the electrical service ground. Sometimes, when the coax ground block is a long distance from the electrical service ground, an optional ground rod can be installed near the ground block. In this case, number six copper wire should be used between the ground rod and service ground. Some codes require the ground rod be at least eight feet deep. Others require four feet. This drawing summarizes a basic TV antenna installation and a basic parts list. 